The Borg Warner Flash O Matic push button transmission, nastiest transmission I've ever seen, valve body is back together. Welcome back to Freeman's Garage. We're back working on the abandoned 1962 AMC Rambler Classic Deluxe, and we are continuing to try to save the Borg Warner Flash O Matic push button transmission, the nastiest transmission you've ever seen. But let's not dilly-dally, let's get straight to work and start reassembling our cleaned up valve body. Hey, I told you at the end of the previous video that I wasn't just gonna walk away from the project and let it collect dust. I'm gonna put this valve body together right now. We're keeping our eye on the P. Welcome to the clean room, featuring clean hands, compressed air, clean towels, fresh transmission fluid, diagrams of how all this goes back together. Ink cartridges are, uh, you know, they're always low, right? So, can barely see it, but that's just backup, okay? You know, we might not even start with it. It's just like your model kits when you were a kid. And also, we got all of our parts, every single piece of the Flash-O-Matic Borg Warner valve body. Oh, and we also got Rolly still with full functioning adjustability. All right, let's get cracking on this. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, let's start with this piece right here. Okay, so we're gonna need those. Okay, we're gonna need these. Okay, that's why we have compressed air here and all the doors closed at Freeman's Garage so no squirrel hair can float in and get lodged somewhere. Godspeed, my friend. Godspeed. If there's one thing left in this world that can give us hope, it's the fact that a public library still charges only 10 cents per page. Kidding. Freeman's Garage has this technology. Okay, I think this is where this goes. The first piece. And it is in. Okay, and then this piece, that goes in here. Okay, so then this next piece here, that goes in, yeah. It goes in there. Oh yeah. All right, and then this tiny little piece. Oh, remember when we were looking at the number 12 earlier? Yeah, what was the deal with that? It's just, this goes in there, right? That's it? I think? Nothing no, nothing else behind there, right? Because this is gonna go in here. Right? Uh-oh, our little piece by our number 12 is, oh, there it is. It was jammed in there. Let me grab the screwdriver and our screws. I, I, I forgot that, yeah, we should probably have a clean screwdriver to boot. And we're already hitting a screw nightmare. Ah, I'm comparing screw sizes. I'm sure it's the shortest screws for these plates because what, what would you need? You wouldn't need the big long screws for it, but there's only three of the shortest, but the ones that are a little bit longer There's six of them and you need three per plate so Yeah, well, we're gonna go with these just wiping the excess tranny fluid off of our mating surface here so that way We can uh, Make sure we don't have a big build up in between the plate and what we're fastening it down onto. You know what I mean. That way the plate actually screws down completely flat and flush onto our valve body. The heck was that? You see, we want everything 
just tight enough so that it doesn't come apart inside the transmission on the Jersey Turnpike. We're not following any steps or anything on these pieces of paper, by the way. It's We're just looking at the pictures because all this says on here is essentially just take all the screws out and pull everything apart and then reverse order to put it back together. Um, yeah. Uh, I think one of these springs... Shoot. I'm actually getting a little concerned right now because that spring right there That goes, nice, that goes into here, right there. And then that little itty bitty piece, that goes in there. But when we put it in earlier here, just kind of fell into nowhere and got all wobbly. Was there a second spring here? That for some reason is not in here, but was inside here when we took things apart. Was it one of these? I don't think it was one of these. Pretty sure I got this stuff all s separated for th for this part of the valve body. You know me, I don't cut a lot of mistakes out. So I'm going to re-watch the footage of us taking this apart. I'll be, I'll be right back. We are in the deep end of this video and you would not believe the delay that I ran into. I just spent, <laughs> just burnt a lot of time. Uh, yeah, trying to wrap my brain around this here because I think I mixed up the, no, I did mix up the spring. So I just spent a long time consulting this and rewatching video footage. And yeah, my filing system wasn't that accurate. That was part of the issue. I kind of rushed on, you know, I kind of, I kind of should have done the bag system earlier and maybe some more sketches or some photographs or something because I said earlier that this hole right here, two springs had come out. According to this, there's supposed to be one in here. And one of the springs in the earlier footage I watched that I said came out of here, it's clearly this spring, which did come out of here. It's in the footage. So I don't, I don't know why I thought two springs came out of this hole. Maybe two springs did come out. I'm not sure. I think I, I, th I think I was just mixing things up. But yeah, so that spring goes in there. And then this plunger goes into there. And I wish I knew which way it was in. It was probably this way, judging by the little bit of wear pattern on there. Yeah, see, that's right. What the heck was I thinking, man? Ridiculous. But hey, George Harrison told us a long time ago, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. I'm sure there probably is a, a torque spec for these screws. I know there is for when we bolt the valve body back up into the transmission because you don't want to warp the valve body at all which I could be the case with all these screws here but I don't know not really too concerned about that when we put the valve body in though that that I am concerned about just not fastening all this together I think we'll be fine but yeah I'm just gonna take my spring blunder and stifle it because we are back together and there's a lot of technical terms or the actual nomenclature for these parts that I haven't been using. This is a, a downshift valve. This is a, a throttle valve. 
but we're just, you know, not really getting in the weeds on that stuff here in this video. And, but yeah, so this is where all the rest of the springs go. I got that all sorted out. So let's move on from that and move on to this. You can't please everybody, so you might as well please yourself, right? This is exactly how they do it in the NASA clean rooms. Okay, we need a... <laughs> I'm telling you, I really thought in my head that I would remember almost all of this. I don't read. I just look at the pictures. Let's start using some nomenclature here, some actual part names, you know, that's part of the fun. All right, primary regulator valve and secondary regulator valve. Okay, this is the secondary regulator valve. Are we missing the primary regulator? Reg <laughs> no! Oh, thank goodness. You know, I, I'm deleting this part. This makes me look dumb. This makes me look bad. It's bad for my image. All right, I got the primary regulator valve. We're gonna need this too. Primary regulator valve going in. Oh yeah. <laughs> Secondary regulator valve. Secondary regulator valve going in. There we go. Okay, I'm sure we've got the proper screws. Okay, that goes like that. This is going pretty smooth. This is satisfying. And you know what, darn it? I didn't think about this till right now. Before we disassemble this valve body, I should have took in a good look at all the hardware to see if it appeared to uh, have been disassembled before. But that ship has sailed. Let's put the modulator back together. So we've got the modulator plug, valve, spring, and dowel pen. I think earlier in the video it sounded like I was saying Dell pen. Like Wisconsin Dells. Nope. You can go back and rewatch that. You tell me what I was saying. Hmm. The modulator valve doesn't want to go in. Uh oh. See this this is a, a tricky sitch here. A tricky situation because do I get some emery cloth or some crocus cloth? I do have on hand. Do I use that to clean this bore up a little bit? Or is that, or is this supposed to be like that? Let's see if we, if we did that, if we cleaned it up, we'd be re washing this whole thing again and taking everything out that we just put in. Life is all about choices. Oh, okay. That's not, okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're fine. It's just, our issue is just getting that end of the modulator valve into where it needs to go, that's all. Yeah, see, there we go. Okay. I think I just, ah, I was just being a loser. <laughs> just being a little, just being a little, a little weakling on it. Okay, now let's get the cap in. In our dowel pin, which, you know, I'm going to try not to put it in lubricated, but it's going to be lubricated anyways. It's going to be soaked in here, right? Well, I mean, actually, well, it's going to be sandwiched in between the, the two halves of this valve body anyways, so. Don't really matter. Sorry. Gotta just make sure that's in all the way. Yeah. Service orifice control valve in spring. 
going in. You know, if this was one of those General Motors deals, this thing would have been done a long time ago. It's not every day that you do this kind of a thing on a Borg Warner M35, T35, Flashomatic, you know, or all that kind of stuff. For mo most people, I would say. It's a dying breed. It's a dying breed, that's for sure. That's for darn sure. Okay. So that's in place. And then we do need a little plate, which is actually referred to as a stop. The stop for the servo orifice control valve. Okay, there's two of them. It's going to be the smaller one. You got to have this spring all the way in when you slide the stop in. But that's easier said than done. Because of delays, if we end up not getting the inside of the transmission cleaned out and, yeah, bigger screwdriver, and the valve body reinstalled and the everything all all the linkage hooked up and everything in time to fire the engine up and do the test in this video right here and we'll do it in the next one and I'm telling you I'm not not trying to leave you for big long cliffhangers so if you're watching these videos as they come out I'm gonna try to get try to get the next one done and out for you within a day or two did I just get that I did, by golly. Boy, we're about to run out of parts, huh? So now let's get the, the downshift valve and the throttle valve and its corresponding springs. Those go into, they go into this one or this one? Okay, this goes here. And then this giddy up goes here. But in what direction? I don't remember. It's got to go this way. There's no other way. Where's our other stop? Okay, I'm not 100% sure exactly where the stop goes in. We'll figure it out. Hmm. We're having a little bit of an issue here where... Ah! This doesn't want to go all the way in. Let's make sure we keep our pieces in order here. This is supposed to go all the way down to this end here. And it was difficult to get out, so, you know, I'm not, uh, not too surprised here. And I don't want to use the word force, but I'm going to. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, I just lost a whole bunch more time because I was very sure that this end with a little nub on it, which um, is our, our downshift valve, is supposed to go in like this and be this little nub be sticking out this little hole. I just couldn't get it in there and I realized there's a little bit of a step down in there. So I think I was looking at this backwards. I think it's actually the, um, the throttle valve that goes in that way. And there's, oh gosh, okay. Which, which spot does a stop go into? Going here or here? I hope this is correct. Oh darn, magnetic punch. Pulling the spring out. Well, the throttle valve is having trouble getting in here too. Okay, there we go. I was thinking about using this. Let's try not to. Yeah, we got it figured out. And see, that's the stop pin. Yeah, we're good to go, man. I'm getting a little nervous on time here. Does anybody watch three hour long videos? We're getting real close, but there's still a lot of work to do. Oh, come on, don't, don't you, don't you get all, 
sideways with me here. There we go. Oh yeah. Holy cow. I think we put this on now. Okay, it can only go on one way. And let me double check. Um, wait, no, this doesn't, well, yeah, this goes on now, but I gotta make sure we get these parts in there. Oh! Um, shoot. Okay, one of our check balls just fell somewhere in this region. Okay, got it. So the spring, okay, that one. Remember that one went right there, correct? And then this went right on there. And then this little spring here, this went in there. And then one of our check balls went there, right? If I'm wrong, you better say something. Speak now or forever hold your peace. And this other one went right there, right? Okay, and then this piece went, go like that, and then go like this. There you go, it went in like that, right? There's some nice little grooves for it to set in. I can see the impression on here as well, so, okay. It's getting real, man. Oops. Just stay with the positive vibes. It's kind of weird though, it's not really sitting flush. That plate just wasn't going down in the, the hole. Okay, and then this part's gonna go, yeah, that's gonna go there. And this part's gonna go there. Okay, and then this part's gonna go right there. <laughs> you know, after doing this, I bet you we can do this a lot faster because we would know what we're doing. And with all the delays, you know what? Hold on, I'm gonna get a Q-tip so I can lubricate that. That's yeah, pretty much been a full day. Believe it or not. And we gotta sort these screws out, which is gonna take time, so... We'll see where we're at when we... get this figured out. It's a reminder to do a better job when taking things apart and organizing everything. You know, sometimes, sometimes we rush, you know, us men and you women watching, you know, you know, women, you know what I'm talking about. I knew this would come back to haunt us. Uh, yeah, you know, better screw organization during disassembly. You know, the idea of that did flick through my mind. Give me a minute here, I'm gonna, Figure out these screws. I don't want to bore you with the details. Don't go anywhere. Don't walk away, Renee. We're closer than ever before. Almost got this completely good to go here. I mean, it is together, okay? No victory lap yet, but give a little woohoo. Sorry, I'll never do that again. Mario, Luigi. Sorry, I'll never do that again either. The, the valve body, it is together. Oh, and yes, I did stab the uh, screen and put a big dent in here. I did not poke through it, luckily. Gotta be careful. We're not out of the woods yet though. Come take a peek at this. Those two screws go in before the screen goes on. And then when the screen goes on, these two will go in like that. And I'll pull, pull these out real quick so it doesn't fall apart. And those are the other two screws that secure this down. And then these two holes, okay, those are gonna also secure our screen onto our valve body, but 
Though that's actually two bolts that actually secure the valve body up into the case of the transmission. So those two bolts, and then there's, oops, excuse me, a third bolt that goes through here into the case of the transmission. And those we took out, those are the three bolts that we removed in a previous video to get the valve body out. Now all of this is all working smooth as butter. That's what it looks like from this side. And remember, this was all, all jammed up. There's one thing here that's kind of got me scratching my head a little bit. It's a little bit scary. There's these two screws left. And when you assemble a, a transmission, you, you usually you don't want screws left over, right? Kind of like when you put together a, a kid's swing set and there's hardware left over. Ah. Have them wear their neck braces. These two here, they're starting to, they're tight, but they feel like they might be starting to strip out or they're not long enough. So I just stopped. This one's nice and snug. But if you look at these two, the two in question, you can see how we've got all this material all the way down to here and all the way down to here. And I'm wondering the screw might be is this screw too long or too short see this might be a better length screw because the two screws I have in here are really short but I don't have another screw that is that length because this one this is a shorty the same length as these two so we might have some screw swappage to do. Okay, I got it. These screws were definitely too short. I pulled them out as I, I tightened them down a bit more and they just loosened up. They didn't strip anything out. They just weren't quite grabbing into the threads. And here's the two that I took out. And then this one here, that's a little bit longer. Maybe this goes in in one of these. I think maybe we'll throw it in this hole right now, but we're going to have to do some swap in here. We'll see if we can find two longer screws to come out to go here and here, and these need to work in the holes that those two longer screws came out of. Woo! Man, that's like Herman's Hermits, no milk today. There's a lot of words. Oh, 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 oh yes. Oh, we're on the right track with that. Oh, that is just good old fashioned satisfaction. I do see a bit of another issue here. We'll get to that in a second. Let's just take care of these two other holes first and let's go to our screws on our side plates here. Side plates, if you will. Let's see if we can get any of these to work for us. The screw dance is almost done. Yes, that's longer. Okay, as long as the, the shorty is gonna work in here, it looks like it will. Yes. Dynamite. Okay, now as long as this works out. Oh, I thought the threads were stripped out. I was gonna say. Oh yeah. Okay, just one more. A little bit longer screw. Okay, good. We just did it again. You know, Mick Jagger, he couldn't get no satisfaction. <laughs> oh, I've got it right here. You know, Mick, you may be the biggest rock star on the planet. You know, you and Paul McCartney. Ringo, he, you know, he's there. He's right. He just didn't write as many songs, you know. What was I saying about Mick Jagger? Oh, yeah. You may be the biggest rock star on the planet, Mick. But I've got all the satisfaction I can handle right here. I don't know what Mick Jagger has to do with the valve body out of my 62 Rambler, but we gotta figure out this one last screw. This is what I was getting at here. We need one that's longer. Yeah, our last screw, it's too short. So are we gonna find a long enough screw to pull out and that 
this shorty, this stubby will work in that spot. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna sell the car. Well, let's do this. Since I uh, don't know what's about to happen here, since we might, <laughs> yeah, we might um, be in some trouble here. Let's go ahead and screw this screen into place. Just for a quick little win here. Okay, now I'll do those two. Uh, uh, yeah, confused myself. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't tighten down the screws inside underneath the screen. You know, I... Sometimes I don't even know what day it is anymore. I don't know what day it is. Computers are taking over the world. These computers just baffle me. Okay, here we go off on another random tangent. But that's what I do. All right, now let's face the screw challenge here. Ah, got it. Maybe. Is that one going to be long enough? Our stubs will work just fine. The king told us back in 68, a little less conversation, a lot more action, please. That's what I'm trying to do. Let's slow down on the yapping and get some more satisfaction. Oh, that's, that's, that's in there. That's got plenty of thread. That's good. It's possible that the screw that was in that spot actually was not in the correct spot because let me see if I can find the screw for you. Because you know, over the course, of, ah, I found it here. Get in here and look at this screw. So, over the course of some of the previous videos, we've been uh, wondering or kind of, you know, conversing about. Has all this been taken apart before in the past by somebody? Well, this screw right here, you can see somebody had been reefing on it in a clockwise fashion, thus tightening, right? Well, that was there before we got to it. So somebody Somebody must have had this part and was uh, dang near stripping stuff out, putting it back together. But who really knows? We'll never know. It's hitting me now. It's sinking in. And I'm realizing that the Borg Warner Flash O Matic push button transmission, nastiest transmission I've ever seen, valve body, is back together. Together again. Like George Jones sang, except for, I think he was talking about him and Tammy Wynette getting back together. Not a Fork Warner valve body. Here's our three bolts to bolt the valve body in. We need two flat washers. About that size. There was only one. Maybe somebody lost two when they took the transmission apart before us. I'm not sure. We don't know. Who knows? But hopefully we can find one in here because the containers only get bigger and bigger. So hopefully we can quickly find a couple washers in here. Look at what I found in here. This might work perfect on our 62 Rambler. This is probably even from the 60s. If you've seen all the brake videos, then you know what that's all about. And this stuff, I've got boxes and boxes and coffee cans of this stuff that was my grandfather's. And a lot of this is probably flooded basement stuff. And who knows? That might have came from a Rambler. Didn't find any flat washers, so I gotta dig through more cans. All I brought 
this type of stuff down to Texas with me from back home in North Dakota. That's why nothing is organized. And stick around, subscribe. We'll be testing that out, trying to use that on the Rambler in a future video. And why don't we just cut to the part where I have flat washers. Holy cow, am I glad I found washers before I took anything more out of this. These are gonna work just swell. They are just a smidge larger outside diameter, but they are the same size inside diameter washer and they're the same thickness as well. So, thank you World War II hero. This hardware is still coming in handy. We're almost there, man. We're a lot closer than we were before. We're definitely making progress for moving forward by leaps and bounds. You remember that uh, cable that goes from the transmission to the throttle linkage? And in a previous video, we sprayed some WD-40 down inside the uh, casing or the sheath of the cable. This guy right here, this end attaches to our throttle linkage and then on the other end down there, it goes into the transmission and connects to our valve body. Let's see if this thing will move. Remember, it was completely frozen. Okay, it won't go that way. Oh, yes! Look at that. That moved. Okay, that's a good sign. That's an omen, my friend. All right, this video is gonna go one of two ways right now. We're at a fork in the road. We're on the Mississippi right now, east meets west. Which direction do we go from the arch? And I cleaned up, by the way. Not a full clean, just a quick general pickup in this area. Wipe down tools, clean the floor. So we got a fresh workspace to go off of from here to the finish. Option number one is we wrap this up quickly and we do a down and dirty test of the transmission. So what we would do is just clean all the gunk out that we can see up inside the transmission case here as best we can and then bolt our valve body back in place. Make sure we hook up our linkage, our shift linkage and that cable that goes to the throttle linkage on the carburetor. Then put some transmission fluid in this thing, fire up the 196 cubic inch straight six and push buttons on the dash and see if this flash o is gonna clunk in the gear or not. And we can worry about technical stuff such as properly adjusting that cable that goes to the throttle linkage per the manual. You know, we can do that stuff, dial that stuff in later because they're just doing a down and dirty test. Option number two is we get this cleaned out in here and then we slow down a little bit and we take a look in the manual and we get that cable adjusted properly from the get-go. Double check how we're reconnecting all of our linkages and maybe even uh, adjusting on the bands up in here, which we definitely would consult the manual. So are we gonna put the extra time in right now or are we just gonna first find out if this thing even has <laughs> any life in it at all after being treated so harshly. Either way, the cleaning all has to be done first. So you think about it if you want while you munch on some popcorn and I'm gonna think about it while I clean away on this. We'll see you on the other side, my friend. Yahoo! We are clean as a fresh diaper. And check this out. I took the liberty of using some white lithium grease to work our cable back and forth. Look at that. Oh, that is just smooth as baby's new butt. Smooth as leather seats. And then I put a little bit of WD-40 on. I'm just letting it a little WD-40 right there, then just letting that sit. Maybe it'll soak in even more and get further down in there and make it even better. However, I did forget about our tubes <laughs> that we took off in the previous video. These are the, the last pieces to go up inside the transmission before the pan goes on. 
all we gotta do, just never stops. All we gotta do is clean those, and then we are bolting things back together inside the transmission. We are very close to testing this out. So I'm gonna clean those, and if you've been hanging in here, you're in for a treat, I hope. So I'm gonna clean those, and then uh, yeah, I'll just keep going. Cool? Sorry, I know. I'll never say coup again. My kid hates it when I say that. I promise you. I won't say it anymore. Alrighty. These are all clean. These are actually referred to as oil pipes in the technical service manual. And this oil pipe here, how I was able to, well, I didn't remember which, which end goes in the valve body and which end goes up in to the transmission itself. But if you look at, there is the shape of the discoloring on here. It's kind of at an angle that matches. It's kind of a little swoopy angle. Just match them up like so. And that's perfect. And this piece of linkage here, this is for actually shifting through our gears, right? This is connected to the push buttons on the dashboard. And remember, we couldn't see this stuff in the previous video when we were getting all this out of the case of the transmission. So it was, I had to just play around with this and figure out which clip goes on which end and which, is, which direction does this go, pointy end up or down, because this clip is, it's the same clip as this here but they're opposite, they're flipped around. And so I had to look at the markings on each end of this linkage to determine which side goes where. For example, the markings line up for this clip to go on like that. And so that's how I figured that out. There actually was not an image of that in the manual. There is one more clip that I didn't even know was in here and I don't see it in the manual either. It's connected to our cable that goes up to the carburetor, the throttle linkage up there. And I have a lot of inspection mirrors, but I grabbed this old Harley Davidson mirror, which is beat up and all scratched up on the backside. The chrome's all ding, so. I'm still, it's not a tool. I am going to wipe it off and put it back into Harley parts, but it's larger than the inspection mirrors that I have. So I just grab that because it really helps because what you can see up in there right now, that clip on the end of the cable, I can't see that because I can't get that far underneath here. But you can see it in the mirror. And so that's how I know that that's there. <laughs> and then you can see I, I got it pretty much unhooked. I'm using the mirror to do that. So all we got to do now is figure out how in the world are we going to get all that linkage hooked back up. So we're going to have to maybe prop the valve body up somehow halfway up in the position. And in a minute here when we go to put the bolts in that secure the valve body to the case, got to tell you something about the torque specs, so hang in for that. Here's that clip we were just looking at inside the transmission. I want to show you this real quick before we start slapping this stuff up in there. Just want to make sure that this is going to work right, that we have this figured out. The way it was up in there was it was in this position. That was on top, and then that was the bottom of it. And if it was in that, if we put it in that way, okay, it's going to go on to there like that. Now here's the test. Are we going to be able to click through the way we need to? Or is this going to be able to turn? Okay, without binding up, and it is. See, because if it was that way wouldn't be able to work okay we're good okay i am not really sure oh my arm 
what is about to transpire here. But what I was going to tell you about the torque values is that it looks like the manual is saying 7 to 10 foot-pounds for the three bolts that <laughs> secure us to the case. At the Texas Freeman's Garage location, torque wrench goes down to 20. Yeah. So hopefully uh, we don't end up with valve body warpage that causes an issue in here from over tightening the bolts. And the other thing is, is the our linkage and everything on our valve body, where do you have all that? You know, where exactly is our, you know, because you got your cable coming from up in the car, right? Your push buttons that goes in and out. And then you got your linkage on the valve body that goes back and forth. Ow, my neck. Where do you have all that when you put this stuff together? I think it's I think it's just gonna fall into place. That's what I think. Let's see what happens if we put hold the valve body up here. Uh, yeah. You also have to get back into these oil pipes. I hope you can see how we have to get The holes in the top of the cell body lined up with these oil pipes. And now I'm putting in one bolt, threading it in a little bit. Got the washers on to give us more space. Wow, you know what? That rod, that linkage rod that goes to our linkage that's connected to our big cable that goes up to the buttons. I've got that on here backwards. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. What the heck happened? Why is that Mozart? Yeah. All right. You are going to kill me for this. But violence is not the answer. So let's not tear at each other. All right, we're going to finish installing the valve body and testing this transmission in the next video. Oh, I gotta set it. Let me explain. This whole time I've been contemplating pumping out the torque converter and the pump inside the transmission because all that goop that was in our valve body and all up in the transmission that we got out, it's a 99% chance that the torque converter and the pump are full of that as well. But I had decided not to do that. Just bolt the thing in, put a gallon of fresh transmission fluid in, fire the thing up, run it, see if the transmission will work. And anything that's trapped in there, the pump and the converter will mix with the fresh fluid. And we're not running it for more than a little bit and drain it again and get all that out and then put new fluid in again. That's kind of dumb, but that can work. And at the last second here, I chickened out. We are going to do the pump. One of the reasons why I wasn't going to pump it is because I don't have an electric pump here at the Texas location. So that costs money and I would need to get even more transmission fluid. But we're probably going to need more anyways. And we're going to be able to filter and reuse the transmission fluid that we do the pumping with. We're going to actually be able to still be able to use that in the transmission. And I just checked, I can actually get an electric pump here tomorrow for $10. I was figuring it was going to be 60 bucks, like the last one. So please don't beat me up over this. We could be testing this thing out in just a couple minutes, but we got we to gotta do this. If you're watching these videos right as they're coming out, I'm going to try to get this next one here out to you within the next... 48 hours. That's my goal. I'm making a lot of excuses around here at Freeman's Garage lately, but it's for the better. And right now I'm going to send you to watch the previous video of working on this transmission. And I will see you very soon. And we will test out this transmission. I promise. Uh, yeah, you know. That's the mark of quality. <laughs>